I'm Patty and I go by Patty Mac Makes Everywhere Online. Welcome to my channel. We're all about living that fun handmade lifestyle. So you will find fun things to make and bake and maybe a little bit of gardening thrown in for good measure. If that sounds like something you're into, then I invite you to subscribe to the channel while you are here today. I remember panel prints back in the 80s. I've been sewing for a while, so it's interesting to see some of the old things coming back in again. And they're super fun, whether you are an experienced sewist or a brand new person, or I'll tell you what else this little project we're gonna do today is great for. This is a great project if you have a younger person in your life and they're sort of interested in sewing, get them this little meow meow or the woof woof, but we're not doing the woof woof today. We're only doing the meow meow. Get them the little meow meow panel. They will love it. They can make all of these fun little pillows and they can either play with all of them or give some as gifts. And I mean, who doesn't love a little kitten? I mean, come on, this, this is adorable. So what I really like is everything's pre-printed and you have this really sweet little face and then on the back you also have a little detail on the back with the little um, their little coat and they have a little tail which I think is precious but um, yeah I really like it so in the meow meow panel you wind up getting uh, four kittens and uh, two adult cats so it's like a mama a daddy and four little babies here's another baby they're so cute, aren't they? <laughs> oh, I love them so much. So the way they show this particular project is that you, uh, on the adult cat, you sew a little pocket on the front. And the idea is with the pocket, you can then put the little uh, baby kittens in and out of the pocket. And here's what the adult uh, pillow looks like. Now, when I did mine, I left the um, pocket off. And I'll tell you why. Um, I have a makers group and somebody in the makers group, she saw when I unboxed this panel print and immediately ran out and got one and made them. And um, she said she had a hard time getting the pocket to, to stay on. Like after just a couple of times of the kids playing with the kittens in and out of the pocket, it came undone. So if you're going to do the pocket, you will want to double reinforce that. I just liked my cat without anything on it. and. If you leave the pocket off, I mean, this is like it's a freestanding pillow. So you could theoretically give all of these as individual gifts. And the little kittens, I think, would be absolutely adorable stocking stuffers. The only place that I could find this panel print, uh, this is a print from Moda. The designer is uh, Stacy Sue, H-S-U. I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. It's absolutely darling, but I could only find it on pineapple fabrics, and I will give you the link for that below. This is not sponsored. I just happened, <laughs> I'll tell you where I saw this. I saw it on uh, Jordan Fabrics. She made them, and I thought, that is the cutest thing ever. I've got to make them. So I really spent some time trying to find them because they were not readily available. So if you're interested, pineapple fabrics, I don't know if they're still getting new shipments of that, or if, you know, it's just whatever's left is what they have. I, I truly do not know. Let's talk about what we need to make this really adorable pillow set. You will obviously need the, the panel print. The whole uh, project rests on that printed fabric. So when you order that, you will get, it's basically a yard of fabric and it's pre-printed with all of the cats, it comes with assembly instructions. It's beautiful to look at. I mean, it's really nice. And this, just the panel itself would make a really darling gift for somebody. I'm gonna say stocking stuffer because it would very easily slip right into a Christmas stocking. It is darling. So you're going to want that panel print. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you how I made it. So we all have our own ways. It's like when we bake we all have our ways of doing things and sewing and quilting is, is no different. I mean, there are standards that we all have to follow. Uh, you know, grain line is real, <laughs> but 
uh, we all have our own methods for how we like to put things together. And so that's what this video is. This video is my method and what I did to make my pillows. I then did something a little bit different from most people. I went ahead and interfaced everything. So let's talk about what we need to make today's project. You will need the printed panel. I also used spray starch. I used lightweight interfacing. I used that on the kittens. I used a medium weight of interfacing on the adult cat pillows. I thought adding the interfacing was a nice touch because it gave the fabric a lot more body. It gave a lot more structure to the finished pillows because the fabric itself was kind of on the thin side. And so with the interfacing, I mean, they're really, they feel really nice in the hand and they were great to sew. So I recommend the interfacing. That is optional. I stuffed using polyfill. I love polyfill, so I used my polyfill stuff. And I sewed everything together using 50 weight cotton thread, which is what I use for all of my quilting projects. It's just regular quilting thread. So it's a cotton fabric. You do want to sew using a cotton thread. After you've stuffed your pillows, you will need to close up the bottoms. And I used ladder stitch to close the opening. I do something a little unusual in that whenever I close up any pillow project, I use embroidery floss. I will tease out two strands and use two strands of a DMC embroidery floss in a color that closely matches whatever the project is I'm sewing up. I'll tell you why. I like it because it has more structure and oomph than using thread. Because when you do the ladder stitch, you have to pull on it a little bit to close everything up. And I just find that using regular thread, it wants to break. I also find regular thread is so thin, it's to me it was hard to work with. So I use embroidery floss to close everything. You can use what you like. If you want to use regular thread, I, I think that's entirely up to you. But for me, I'm going to show you using embroidery floss. The tools that you will need for today's project are, of course, a sewing machine. This is a machine project. So you'll want a sewing machine. You will need to have a good quality steam iron. That is very important to getting this project to look as good as it does. If you're going to have an iron, you need an ironing board. You will also need good fabric scissors. You're going to need clips to hold the uh, pieces together as you're sewing. You're going to need the hand sewing needles to use with the embroidery floss to close up the opening. I used a quarter inch seam allowance, so I used my quarter inch foot. I highly recommend using a quarter inch foot so that you keep a consistent seam. You really want a good consistent seam so that you get the best possible look to your finished pillow. And the last thing I used, this is the first time I've used it and I love this thing. I wish I had bought it sooner. It is a two point turner from Clover. I saw that on Shabby Fabrics. She just loves them. And so I went ahead and got one to try it out. I love it. It was well worth it. I think it was like 10 bucks but you know, I'll use it for the rest of my life. So I'm okay spending $10 on it. It made a big difference in turning. Usually I use uh, a chopstick, but with that turner, it did such a nice job. And it lets you not only uh, get nice sharp points on the ears and in your corners down here at the bottom, it lets you really um, flush out all of the, the side seams as well. So I, really swear by that little clover point turner. Here you can see where I sewed up the little kitten and uh, you can tell that it's been hand sewn, but you know, I think that's cute. I think it gives it this really sweet handmade look. Uh, usually I would do that on the bottom, but with the way the kittens are made, as you'll see when we go to construct them, uh, you fold them. Let's jump into making today's meow meow panel print cat pillows. <laughs> okay, <laughs> stick around. <laughs> The steps to making this adorable cat pillow set, the Meow Meow panel print, the first thing that you're going to do is to cut apart the cats. And what I did was I cut them out together in the, their set. So like you can see on the cutting table here, I have this cat and I left those two pieces together. And then what I did was interfaced 
this entire panel. So the interfacing is all the way across. The large cat has been interfaced using heavy weight interfacing and I just thought it gave the finished pillow a lot of extra body, which I felt like it needed. For the kittens, I did the same thing. I cut them out together onto just that one panel piece. I interfaced the two kittens together and then when I was ready to start working with the kittens, I uh, cut them apart. So you can see uh, this kitten is still um, surrounded by the excess fabric and this kitten I have cut out. What I recommend that you do is when you cut the kitten, you first interface. So he's interfaced with lightweight interfacing. I cut about an eighth of an inch away from the cut line, which is right here on the dotted line. And I did that because it's really small up here and I felt like if I went with a full quarter inch seam allowance up here uh, around the ears, I wouldn't get the really um, good sized crisp ears like I wanted. So I just went ahead and uh, gave that extra eighth of an inch out here and then when I put it onto the sewing machine, I sewed with the quarter inch seam allowance. Here's the finished kitten and you can see that the ears are nice and sharp and that the corners are sharp and that's what I wanted. Uh, I want you to see also how much smaller your kitten will finish out. So your final kitten is pretty small by the time you've sewn those quarter inch seam allowances all the way around and turned him inside out. He's pretty small and you know you're going to wind up flipping your cats. So here he is. So you can see how much you wind up losing. So I think adding that extra eighth of an inch is just, it worked for me, that's optional. You don't have to do it, but this is what I'm recommending. And you can see on the back of this little cat, he just has a tail, but see this one has the little spots. Whoops. Whoops. So there's plenty of spots on the back. And this little one is a tiger cat, so he's just got his little brown tail. They're so cute. So let's take a look at cutting. I used my fabric scissors to cut all the way around the cat, uh, retaining that eighth of an inch cut line. Once the cats were cut out, I folded them right sides together and using my quarter inch seam guide, sewed the quarter inch seam all the way around. I left an opening on one of the sides to turn the cat. What you see me doing here is carefully trimming away excess seam allowance around the ears and on the top of the head. And you just really want to take your time here. The nicer job that you can do with clipping your corners and trimming away excess seam allowance, the nicer your kittens and your full-size cat will uh, will lay and present as you have finished them. And here you can see I'm leaving that extra seam allowance and the point where I would be turning the pillow out. You also want to take some time and really clip the corners, clip the top of the head, clip along those ears. This is going to ensure that your cat looks 100% better when you go to turn it. When the kitten is done, you will flip him out, right side out, and then that's where that point turner really uh, shone like a star. It was super helpful, and I feel like I was able to get better looking points than I did using the chopstick. So um, it was a good investment. For the full-sized cat, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to keep that eighth of an inch extra space around as we cut. And for the large cat, you will lay them right sides facing, just like any other sewing project. Put your right sides together. I wound up using my little uh, butterfly clips to hold the cat in place. I did not want to use pins in case it left any kind of mark 
Uh, so I just went with the clips and I clipped them together. I clipped most carefully around the ears because I really wanted a good result from the ears. On the large cat, I started sewing along the bottom and I carefully pivoted at all of the sharp points. Take your time getting really good sharp corners. That will give you the best result on your pillows. On the large cat, I left the opening along the bottom and that way I could close it along the bottom. And I did the same process with the point turner. Before I did the polyfill stuffing, I went ahead and pressed the cats out again. You'll never go wrong with a really good steam press before you go to finish a project. It makes a huge, huge difference. I also made sure as I did the final press to really lock in the little seam allowance where I closed my pillows. That way that had a really sharp seam. The interfacing also helps with that to retain the, the crispness of the press. And that makes it a lot easier to do your ladder stitch to close your pillow. And that's today's video on how I made the Meow Meow cat panel print. I sure hope you enjoyed it and I sure hope you're inspired to make your own because it's so cute. <laughs> I mean, really, look at, oh, I love them so much. So anyway, I hope that you're inspired. I hope you enjoy my tips and tricks. And uh, yeah, I'll see you around in the next video. Thanks for watching.